will always deal with obedience. Amen? Amen. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I can tell who's here last night. That's great, okay? You can also tell who's here this morning. And then, oh, right. I'm going to work on that last part. Guys, here's the thing. Guys, obedience is something that we learn as children. In the book of Ephesians, it says, Children, obey your parents. For this is right. Guys, I truly believe that God gives us parents that we are to learn obedience from so that when we become adults, when God asks us to do something, we already know what obedience is. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh we're having church now. Okay, now. Okay, so let's get into this story. In the book of Jonah, there was a man. His name was Jonah. He was a prophet. Now, that doesn't mean that he was, you know, making money, all right? But here's the deal. A prophet was a messenger. It was a man or a woman of God that he would choose to give the message to, and then that prophet would go deliver the message to the people. In those days, in the Old Testament, that's how God, uh, that is one of the ways that God got his word out. So it says that one day, God came to the prophet Jonah and said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Tell the people there to stop doing their bad, evil, wicked things because I love them. <laughs> and instead of being oh, obedient, instead of doing what God wanted to do, instead of going to Nineveh, it says that Jonah ran in the exact opposite direction to a place called Joppa, where there was a hut, and he bought a ticket. You're welcome, Star Wars fans. And he got on a boat. It looked a lot like that, I bet, okay? He got on the boat, and it says the boat sailed away towards a place called Tarshish. I know. You guys pay extra to movies for those special 3D effects. These are all free today, all right? Yeah. There they were on the open water. It was a beautiful day. Jonah was in the bottom of the ship taking a nap. Headed towards Tarshish, which I think would be a really great name for a cat. Anyways, there they are. You're going to do that now, aren't you? If you've got a cat at home, you're looking for a name. I saw you. Man. All right, now. And it says the waves got bigger and bigger and bigger until there was this huge, ginormous storm. And there was lightning. And the rain was coming down. And the birds were flying away. It's pretty good stuff, isn't it? Yes. It says that the the sailors on board that boat, if you look at the text, it says they were scared. Scared. That's level two of being scared. They're scared, then they're scared. We'll talk about level three here in a little bit, okay? They were scared. They realized this was a supernatural storm, and there was a God in the heavens that was angry with somebody on board that boat. Were they right? Yes, they were. Now, these sailors, we believe, they were what they call Meaning, they believed in, or I'm sorry, they were polytheistic, which means they believed in many different gods, okay? We're monotheistic, which means that we believe in one God, one true God, Jonah's God, the one true God. These sailors, we believe, worshipped many different gods, and they believed that there was a God that was angry with somebody on board that boat. Were they right? Yes. And they were trying to figure out who it was that made God angry. So they started going around trying to figure out who it was. Was it you who made God angry? You drank the milk out of the fridge and put it back in there without the lid. Maybe it was you. You put the toilet paper over it instead of under Maybe it was you. You left the toilet seat up. Maybe it was you, tiny chihuahua. You have been nothing but trouble this whole journey. They couldn't figure out who it was. They couldn't figure out who it was. So it says, in the Bible, it says that they cast lots. And Brother Dale, I don't know about you, I've done some actual serious uh, look into this. We're not really for sure what lots were, but it looks a lot like the game of Yahtzee, okay? So it says they figured out that it was the lot fell on Jonah. And they said, Jonah! Come here. Did you make God angry? And he was like, yeah, pretty much. And he wanted me to go to Nineveh, and I was like, no way <laughs> am I going over there. So I bought this ticket to get as far away from there, and yeah, so he's probably pretty mad. And they were like, Jonah, we're going to die! And he 
was like, okay. <laughs> now they didn't want to die, but Jonah was going to die. Jonah suggested, he's like, look, just, just throw me overboard. I, I would rather die than do what God wanted me to do. Hold on, time out. That is what we call in my house a B, A, a bad attitude. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your parents ask you to do something like take out the trash, and you're like, I don't want to take out the trash. It's gross. It smells horrible. It's not my chair. I don't want to. You guys ever seen that in your house? Yes. Probably this morning before you came to Sunday school, right? Yeah. So check it out. You're like, you rip the bag out of the trash can and you stop. And then you kick it out the door. Did you take out the trash? Technically, yes. Should you run for your life? Yes, yes, you probably should. Or maybe your mom says, sweetie, can you please unload the dishwasher? Now, hold on a second. I know that's a horrible thing for your parents to ask you to do, kids. I mean, how dare they, okay? How dare they ask you children to put your hands on clean dishes that magically washes themselves because of the big box. You just push a button. And your parents ask you to take out the clean dishes and put them away. How dare they? I know. But you kids, I've seen this. I've seen this happen. Your mom asks you to unload the dishwasher, and you're like, Oh no! I can't do it! I don't know how! It's so hard! You have to open the door and slide out that tray, and you have to put them away! You guys ever seen that in your house? Yes! Yes! Yeah, I don't know why. You know what? When that happens in our house, we just go old school, all right? I'm like, fine, you get to wash them in the sink, all right? Or you can do the dishes like I did when I was, you know, a single guy. You know, you just put them on the floor and the dog takes care of it. Here's the thing, all right? <laughs> being honest, being honest, okay? Now, here's the thing. Jonah had a bad attitude. He would rather die than do what God told him to do. So the sailors, though, they didn't want to kill Jonah because they figured if God wanted Jonah dead, then God would kill Jonah. And if they killed Jonah, then God might get mad at them because they killed Jonah and God wanted to kill Jonah. And so now God might kill them because they killed Jonah. Guys, killing is a messy business. Don't ever get into it, all right? They are definitely overthinking the situation. And it says that they tried to do everything they could to save the ship. They did everything they could. And then, guys, it says that they were rowing hard. They were throwing everything overboard that they didn't need to lighten the load. Now, I don't know what was on board that boat. But if it was a boat like today, and we were just to use our imagination a bit, maybe the scene would have looked a little bit like this. Aye, Captain! Yes! What, okay, we need to get rid of things, not the huge, big case of beef jerky. Oh, I love this stuff. Are you sure? Okay. Badoonk. We don't need it. No. No, Captain. Are you sure? It's, it's Dr. Pepper. Oh, my goodness. This is the Duckman Dr. Pepper. This is the good stuff. You're right, Badoonk. <laughs> what else? No, not the 97-inch plasma screen TV. It's really heavy, make up your mind. Okay, Badoonk. <laughs> what else? Oh no, not the Nintendo Wii U, Captain. You're right, we threw up the TV, it doesn't matter. Badoonk, is there anything else that's completely worthless on board this boat? You, Tiny Chihuahua. You, you are completely worthless. I saw what you did to the carpet back there. That was disgusting. Badoonk. All right, now. Time out before you get too attached to the chihuahua. That's not in the story, all right? We were using our imagination for a bit. Plus, he's wearing one of those little Dolce & Gabbana like things. He's perfectly fine. All right, now, it says that they were throwing things overboard. It was getting out of control. The boat was about to fall apart. They finally came to the point where they realized they were going to have to throw Jonah overboard. And so they said, Jonah, come here. Hey, look, Jonah, is that a dolphin? I took it over there. Is that a whale? No, wait, I think it's a floating chihuahua. Badook! And it says 
that the waves went from being all crazy and thrashing the boat to very calm. It says the storm immediately stopped. As soon as Jonah was thrown overboard, the storm stopped. Isn't that amazing? There was Jonah floating in the water. Now, I don't know about you, but that would have been a pretty amazing sight, right? Now, now, don't touch that pastor dead. All right? It's dead. You don't touch your dead one. Now, I got this little ball here. We're going to let this be Jonah. Now, guys, imagine this. Now, if you look in the text, it says that, uh, where is it? Right over here in um, chapter 1 and verse 15. It says, the sailors picked up Jonah, threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors, verse 16, were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now here's what I want you to see in this part of the story. That's what this story is loaded with so much, okay? These sailors, these are pagan sailors. They do not follow the one true God, the God we follow, the God of Jonah. Here's the thing. They knew that as soon as they threw Jonah overboard and the storm stopped, Jonah's God was real. And it says that they made vows to follow that God. Isn't that crazy? Now, even through the disobedience of Jonah, God was still at work. There was Jonah. I'm going to take this little blue ball here. I'm going to put it right inside this clear balloon. Clear. It's my favorite color. It goes with everything. Now, so check it out. There's Jonah floating in the water. There he is. Isn't that crazy? And I can imagine once they threw Jonah overboard, and then all of a sudden the storm stopped, and there's just Jonah floating. They were like, Jonah, your God is real. It's amazing. That is so cool. And bro, I'm sorry, but you can't come back in the boat. We're going to leave you now. Goodbye. But your God, he's awesome. All right? And as they're talking to him, I'm imagining this conversation them going on, the sailors and Jonah. He's like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, okay. And they're like, Jonah, your God is the real God. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says, a great fish comes and swallows Jonah. Go. And there was Jonah in the belly of a big fish. Now imagine you're having this conversation with Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, your God is real. And then the fish comes and swallows him and he's gone. And you're like, ah! oh! did, you, did you see? Did you, did you see that? And I can just see a little troll floating in the water just as fast as he can. All right, yeah. <laughs> Guys, here's the deal. The Bible says it was a great fish that swallowed Jonah. Now, I don't know about you, but I think a great fish is catfish, right? Yeah. So I think a big, giant catfish, like some of them on the Red River, just came and swallowed up Jonah, right? Or a tuna. Or a mahi-mahi. Here's the thing. We don't know exactly what kind of fish it was. It was we believe it was a whale. Because in our minds, you know, whales are big, right? Now, I did have an argument with a uh, third grader one time, because that's what I do. And um, we argued the point that it was not a shark, all right? And I, because I've seen Shark Week on the Discovery Channel, I think if it was a shark, um, this story would definitely be over, all right? <laughs> He's got way too many teeth. And see, that's what's really great about this story, guys. This is only the end of chapter one. Jonah is told to go to Nineveh. He says no. He gets on a boat. He almost dies. They throw him overboard, and he gets eaten by an animal. The end. Go to sleep. Right? I mean, that's the kind of stories I like to tell my kids. Right? Yes. And then Jonah got eaten by a whale. Sweet dreams. Now, I'm just kidding. I don't do that to my kids. However, <laughs> however, if you ever told a story like that to your kids, they will quit asking you to read you stories. Uh, they will quit asking you to read them stories, right? There is Jonah inside the belly of this big fish. Now, that in itself is pretty incredible. But the fact is, he was in it for three days. For three days, Jonah was inside the belly of a big fish. Pretty crazy. It was now we have to get past this point, and then we can move on. But this is a miracle in itself, right? So here's what we're going to do. Um, there's no major aquarium in Jacksboro, so there's, we don't have access to big, large sea creatures.